Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I have done a top 5 best and worst coaster types, but that leaves a lot of coaster types in the middle unranked. To fix that, today I will be making a list of all 40 coaster types in the game. Keep in mind that this tier list is about how good the coaster type is in scenario play, not how much I like to build with it or whether I think it looks good. If you disagree with my ranking, please argue with me in the comments. Two more things before we start. Firstly, I am merging some coaster types that the game sometimes considers as separate types into one. For example, the Wooden Wild Mouse and the Wooden Wild Mine Ride are just the same coaster with different cars that I both call the Wooden Wild Mouse. And secondly, the top and bottom 5 may differ from the videos I made on them as my opinion on how good they are may have changed since. Now that that's out of the way, let's start with the first one in alphabetical order. The air powered vertical coaster is a great start as in certain conditions it's the best coaster type you can have. It has very high stats combined with a very short ride time allowing for a relatively high throughput at a super high ride ticket price. It's not perfect though as even the smallest designs are not that cheap and a normal design is quite expensive. Additionally, its intensity rating is always high so it's very one dimensional. Therefore, it will go into the really damn good tier. And we go from good to bad as the bobsleigh coaster is just disappointing in every way. It has very mediocre stats, a low throughput because of low capacity trains and worst of all it crashes easily if you make it go over a hill even slightly too fast. It's not the worst coaster type in the game but I would still like it to get away from me very quickly. Next up is the compact inverted coaster which is a bit better but not great. It has higher stats but with that comes a relatively high intensity rating and since it's an inverted coaster type also a high nausea rating. One of the other things that makes it worse than the inverted coaster which we'll see later is that the compact invert doesn't have access to banked sloped turns. This makes avoiding high lateral g-forces more difficult leading to more cases of extreme intensity. It does have inversions and quite a few different types which is a positive but it's still a bit meh. The corkscrew coaster is basically the non-inverted version of the compact inverted coaster. One advantage is that it only needs 2 units of clearance whereas the compact invert needs 3 just like most other inverted coaster types. Of course there is one specific tiny design that elevates the corkscrew coaster from meh to really really good and that is the micro corkscrew. It is so good and efficient in all kinds of ways that I've made an entire video about it that you can watch after this tier list. We have now arrived at our first god tier coaster type, the Floorless Coaster. It has really good stats, access to loads of different inversions and a stupidly high maximum throughput thanks to the 4 across seating. With 120 the Floorless Coaster also attracts the most guests to the park of any ride in the game. In vanilla and classic all it has to gain energy is a chain lift but in open RCT2 it gets even better as it gets the launched lift hill and boosters as well. That would make it the best coaster type in the game but for this list I want to stick to just vanilla and classic as they are the official versions. Up next is the flying coaster which is a bit of a weird one. It needs at least one inversion on every design otherwise you get a massive penalty to the excitement rating. It does only have two inversion types to choose from which is oddly less than the other variant of this ride, the laydown coaster. Its stats are usually fairly high which is good for the ride ticket price but the high nausea does cause a lot of puke. That's something that all inverted coaster types suffer from in some capacity but the flying coaster has it worse than most. This all makes it a bit below average so it goes in the meh tier. From one god to alright to another god. The Giga Coaster is one of the best coaster types in the entire game. 
It has an extremely high excitement rating compared to its intensity and an even lower nausea rating. It has by far the highest support limit in the game with 128 meters, also attracts 120 guests to the park and has long high capacity trains. In addition, it has the unique cable lift, allowing it to climb the first lift hill at 24 km per hour instead of just 12. In Rollercoaster Tycoon Classic it gets even better as it gets boosters there. Not up to 107 km per hour as most other coaster types with boosters have, but up to 215 km per hour instead. The only downside is that it is quite expensive, but it is still the best coaster type we've seen so far. The roller coaster continues as we now go down to the deepest pits of hell with the hardline coaster. It has absolutely god awful stats, by far the worst in the game. Just look at this, 5.1 excitement combined with a massive 8.3 intensity and 5.4 nausea. Actually it's much worse as these are the stats after OpenRCT2 buffed the excitement rating. In Vanilla and Classic it only has 3.5 excitement and the same intensity and nausea ratings. This is the only coaster type in the game that regularly has an intensity rating more than twice that of the excitement rating. The fact that it is always built in a straight line is useful sometimes, but it is still absolute trash. And up we go again, as the Hyper Twister is basically a slightly worse version of the Giga Coaster. It has a bit worse stats, a lower support limit and no cable lift or booster, so the ride time for taller designs will always be quite long. It does have 4 across seating on one of the train types and vertical slopes, so while it will be a tier below the Giga, it does have some things that the Giga doesn't. This is different for the Hyper Coaster, which is almost entirely just a worse Hyper Twister. It has worse stats, a slower chain lift and no banked sloped turns, which is especially annoying because usually it goes quite fast. The only thing that it does slightly better than the Hyper Twister is that it has the highest capacity trains of any coaster type, with up to 42 guests per train. Despite that, it is still one tier below the Hyper Twister. Up next is the inverted coaster, which is pretty much a better version of the compact inverted coaster. It has better stats, 4 across seating and access to sloped banked turns. It has access to a lot of different track pieces, which is nice, but it also has a high intensity rating, which is sometimes useful, but oftentimes also not. Ultimately, I would say this coaster type is quite alright, just below the hyper coaster. The inverted hairpin coaster is the first of the four wild mouse coaster variants and it's the only inverted one. Like all of them it's very cheap and due to the tiny turns it has access to it is also very compact. Because it's inverted it gets the highest stats out of all wild mice coaster types which is a good and a bad thing depending on what you want. The 4 across seating is helpful as it allows for more capacity than other wild mice. I would say this one is on the upper side of quite alright. The next one is the inverted impulse coaster which is similar to the air powered vertical coaster in that it is always launched except it's worse in almost every way. It only has vertical turns making it really limited and often tricky to connect back to the station. It also has worse stats than the air powered vertical coaster and can't do the same super fast design so it can also make less money. I can't quite put it in the same tier as the bobsled, it's not that bad, but it is quite meh. Because we're doing this in alphabetical order we're not done with the inverted coaster types quite yet as this is the inverted shuttle coaster. It is basically a compact inverted coaster type but it has different trains and can only be in reverse inclined shuttle mode. This makes it just meh. The one after it, the inverted vertical shuttle is the exact same except it also has access to vertical tracks so I guess it's ever so slightly better than the inverted shuttle coaster. After all those inverted coasters, it's now time for the first of the trio of absolutely iconic coaster types, the Junior Coaster. 
It is super cheap and usually quite small, so it's easy to fit in just about anywhere. It is also very hard to mess it up. Even if you make it take a turn too fast and you get the first penalty for excessive lateral g-forces, your intensity rating will usually still only be around 8 or so. This makes it a fantastic coaster type to use to learn how to build custom designs. It also makes it quite limited though, which is why it's not the highest tier and slightly below the air powered vertical coaster. A while ago we had the flying coaster and now we have its brother, the laydown coaster. It has a bit lower stats, no sloped banked turns, but surprisingly it does have more inversions available. It has about the same utility, but I would rank it ever so slightly worse than the flying coaster. Up next is the LIM launched coaster, which, as the name suggests, is always launched. This doesn't mean it's particularly good though, as it has a very high intensity rating and a comparatively low excitement rating. And unlike the air powered coaster, the LIM coaster doesn't get high stats on a very short track, so it will either have low stats or a long track and a low throughput. The only thing that makes it somewhat good is that it can do a good microcoaster design, which puts it near the top of the quite alright tier. And shortly after the junior we get our second iconic coaster type in the form of the looping coaster. There probably is no more generic coaster type than this one. It has decent stats, isn't too expensive, has access to only the most basic inversion type and is simple to build. The looping coaster is another great type to learn with. It is better than the corkscrew coaster, except for its micro design, which is very good, but a bit worse than the micro corkscrew, and therefore I would rank it just below it. Now that we have reached the 13th letter of the alphabet, it's time for the mine ride. Unlike all other coaster types, it has powered trains, so it doesn't need a chain lift or boosters to gain speed. If you design it right, you can maintain a decent average speed, but as soon as it goes up an even slightly large hill, it slows down to a miserable 3 km per hour. It is good enough to just about make the quite alright tier though. From the mine ride to the mine train coaster, which is basically the worst cousin of the wooden coaster. It has no banked turns or inversions and has a bit worse stats, but it is otherwise not bad. Just like the mine ride, I'd say it's the very middle of the road, except a tiny bit better. Up next is the mini coaster, which is the best of the two coaster types starting with the word mini. That doesn't mean it's any good though, far from it actually. It can only have single cars as trains, which are very light so they lose speed incredibly quickly. This is very annoying and it's super easy to build designs that would work fine on normal coaster types but don't work for the mini coaster because the car goes too slow by the time it reaches that hill. Combine that with a low support limit and low stats and even its cheapness isn't enough to drag it out of the just bad category. Despite that it is still better than the next mini coaster, which isn't hard because the mini suspended coaster is the worst coaster type in the game. It is similar to the mini coaster but worse in every aspect. It has even lighter cars that lose speed even quicker, it has no steep turns, a lower support limit, lower stats and a lower throughput. There is nothing redeeming about the mini suspended coaster. Sure, it's cheap, but any money spent on this coaster type is wasted money. I have said of a few coaster types that they are easy to build with, but that's definitely not true for the multi-dimension coaster. It is very tricky to build and to get it to do what you want. It is the most expensive coaster type in the game and it has, along with the swinging suspended coaster, the highest nausea rating in the game as well. The only reason it stays out of the absolute trash tier is that it is a proper big coaster type that can still make you good money, but it it is very bad. From difficult to build to super easy to build as there is only one possible design. 
The only thing you can do wrong with the reverse freefall coaster is not building a tower that's tall enough at the end. Otherwise all designs are the exact same except scaled up or down a bit. It has fairly low stats but it's not too bad for its price and because it's only one tile wide it can fit in some odd spaces. It is still a bit mad though, mainly because it has the least variety out of all coaster types. The reverser coaster is the second coaster type that can crash by flying off the tracks after the bobsleigh. It is a little bit better than the bobsleigh, but only slightly. Its main advantage is that it's very cheap, but other than that it's quite crap. The single cars give it a low throughput and it can't do much outside of some gentle hills and the signature reverser piece. Funnily enough, the side friction coaster is next, as it's the exact same as the reverser coaster except it has longer trains and no reverser pieces. These longer trains make it a bit better as they allow for a greater capacity and throughput and they lose speed less quickly. Therefore it just about makes the MAH category, edging out the inverted impulse coaster. Next up is another cheap coaster type, the spinning wild mouse. It is the worst of the four wild mice coasters as it doesn't have steep hills. This means you can do much fewer different things with it and also that you can't get high stats as easily, except for nausea as its trains give a massive 43% extra nausea. It is still fairly decent, so it can go at the very bottom of the quite alright tier. The spiral coaster holds the record for the lowest natural nausea rating in the game. This design, which includes a lot of turns, still has less than 2.5 nausea, which is just incredible. Its stats are actually quite similar to the Giga Coaster, except they are all a lot lower. The only special feature of the ride is the curved lift hill, which is very slow and often more of a hindrance than a benefit. Because of its amazing stat ratio, it is still good, but it's not great, so I'll put it in between the Mine Ride and the Mine Train Coaster. The next coaster is the best of the bad. The stand-up coaster has a crazy high intensity rating and a low excitement rating, making it really easy to make it too intense. Apart from that, it is very similar to the corkscrew coaster with access to the same elements. However, because the stand-up coaster doesn't have a launched mode in Vanilla or Classic and has much much worse stats, it drops all the way from really damn good to the top of just bad. The stand-up twister coaster is identical to the floorless coaster except the trains give it a much higher intensity rating. At the same time, its excitement boost from the trains is lower than that of the floorless, making it worse in two aspects, which puts it one tier below, in between the corkscrew and the looping coaster. The third wild mouse coaster is the best wild mouse coaster. The steel wild mouse is similar to the spinning wild mouse except with steep drops and no massive nausea boost from its trains. This makes it a really good cheap money maker with a decent throughput if you remember to set the minimum waiting time to zero. Because of that it is the only wild mouse to get into the second highest tier. Do you want a mini suspended coaster but a bit better? Well, that's basically what the steeplechase is. The trains are a bit heavier so they lose less speed and it has a bit better stats, but otherwise they are pretty much identical. Therefore, the steeplechase is the second worst coaster in the game. Next is the swinging suspended coaster, which, as I mentioned earlier, has the highest nausea rating in the game along with the multi-dimension coaster. It also has incredibly long trains, which is a curse and a blessing. It means that you need a very long station to accommodate the trains, but they are useful for building super steep lift hills. It doesn't have banked turns at all, and even though it swings, that doesn't change the lateral g-forces it generates, so you need to be really careful. Because of that and the other things, I can only place it slightly higher than the multi-dimension coaster. And here we have it, the ultimate variety coaster. The twister coaster is the same as the floorless and the stand-up twister, except it gets the launched lift hill. Going uphill and gaining speed at the same time is something incredible to behold. In Rollercoaster Tycoon Classic it even gets boosters as well, making it even better. 
Unlike the floorless and stand-up twister trains, these trains don't give any extra excitement so it does have slightly lower stats. That is not enough to make it a worse coaster though, but it is enough to place it just below the Giga Coaster. From one godlike coaster type to another. The vertical drop coaster is the only coaster type with 6 across seating, making it able to reach the highest single station throughput of any ride in the game, up to 6000 guests per hour. It has fantastic stats and access to steep lift hills which reduce lift hill times dramatically. Along with the small level to steep track pieces this allows for really tall but compact designs. It's not quite as good as the other three but I can still confidently put the vertical drop coaster in the god tier. And it's time to go back down again with the Virginia reel. Not too far down though as this super cheap compact wooden coaster type is surprisingly good. It doesn't have very high stats but its cheapness offsets that. It comes with some great pre-built designs that can make you really good money for just a few thousand bucks. There is a myth that the Virginia reel can fly off the tracks just like a bobsleigh but that's not true. It also can't fly off the tracks in turns as the ghost train is the only ride in the game that can do that. It's basically just a slightly better spinning wild mouse so I'll place it in between the inverted coaster and the hyper coaster. We keep going down as we have arrived at the water coaster. It loses speed quickly and any time you put in a water section it loses all its speed. Add to that that it has low stats and you have yourself one bad coaster type. Up next is the last of the iconic trio, the wooden coaster. It naturally has quite high stats, meaning you can always charge surprisingly much for it. It does mean you need to be a little bit careful with the intensity rating, but you can still make it fairly extreme before you reach 10. This would make it better than the looping coaster, but it cannot do a micro coaster design at all, so I'll have to place it right below it. With that we have now arrived at the last coaster type of the list, the wooden wild mouse. It is very similar to the steel wild mouse except it can only fit 2 guests per car instead of 4 and has no brakes. The lack of brakes can make it tricky to avoid excessive lateral g-forces which makes the coaster slightly worse but it's still quite alright. And that is the tier list. From the astonishingly amazing Giga Coaster and Twister Coaster all the way down to the terrifically terrible Steeplechase and Mini Suspended Coaster. As I said before, if you disagree with me, please tell me in the comments below. Do keep in mind that this list is based on vanilla and not open RCT2. In open, the floorless coaster would be at the top and many other placements would be different as well. If you want to see my old videos about the top 5 best and worst coaster types where I go a bit more in depth, you can click on either of these videos. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.